I'm Tiger Woods, and this is my game. This is a golf lesson none of you have had before. While well, winning as a as a 21 year old, I knew I would be in that position many more times with a chance to win it again. The golf course was set up for me. It was what I thought was on a shorter side. Uh, par fives are all reachable, and I had a lot of short irons. If I haven't put my game together, I'd be in this with a number of years to come. Whether I'd win or not, who knows? But I'd be there. At 43, <laughs> I don't know how many more years I have. Pretty much, you know, once the previous season ends, um, he, he starts thinking about uh, Augusta and the Masters. In the playoffs, he sort of adjusted his driver, and that was a huge step. He was able to start to draw the ball, and at Augusta, you have to draw the ball as a right-handed player, and he was able to start to do that, and he started talking to me about, this will be good for Augusta. Yeah, it was... Yeah, give or take six months of trying to figure out one equipment. Number two, I needed to work on setting the ball up a little higher. And that was to get ready for the Masters. And I, I wasn't quite comfortable setting it up and I wasn't quite comfortable setting it up right to left. And the only golf course that we played of any kind of hilliness was in Austin. And so, Simulating that at home, simulating that in the gym, of trying to get uh, my body and my game feeling comfortable enough where I can do that. And not only getting to where I was comfortable, but then feeling I can be precise. That's something I started to come to grips with. I was starting to get really comfortable with all those concepts, and I was starting to feel a lot better. He was very focused, um, you know, Mentally, he seemed just in a very good place in terms of um, feeling like he was fully prepared. And I, I've seen him like that before, obviously, but um, you know, the, it's almost like that person who's so prepared for the test, you know you're gonna kinda ace it. Um, now it's just simply a matter of, you know, execution. He's been in the hunt probably half the majors I've worked for him, and I've seen him, you know, never get flustered and always have you know, a way about him, a confidence about him, but this was a little bit different. There was just a calmness and easiness about him where almost like in the back of his mind, I got this kind of thing. I'd much rather be energized than be physically prepared, because I can figure it out. I just felt I had so much energy, because uh, I didn't wear myself out. All the, the, the wear and tear on the range of hitting so many golf balls or spending too much time chipping and too much time bent over putting. I spent my time, I did all my leg work, but I never overdid it, never extended myself until it was time. I just felt like everything was coming together and now I just had to go put it together. The key with Augusta National is to not miss the ball pin high. I shouldn't say pin high, flag high. Either you miss it short or long. And you have to figure out where you want to be, either short or long, right or left. And, you know, flag high is some of the, the hardest, most difficult breaking putts or chips you'll ever face. But then trying to figure out how am I going to get to these spots? Well, it's not only the approach shot, but how am I going to get the tee shot so I can give myself the angle to get into a spot where I can miss it here so I have an easy either chip or putt. I can play aggressively. And it's trying to figure all that out is really difficult, especially when the wind starts picking up. And it's coming from all different directions. And there's no other golf course that the wind swirls like that. You know, a five, 10 mile hour wind, it feels like it's blowing 30 because you can't miss the ball in, the, in these certain spots. And you're trying to get yourself in the correct spot. And it just gets magnified. Timing is everything, and trying to figure all that out is one of the most diabolical challenges that you'll ever face, and, and something that I've ever faced.
One of the neat things for us as players is that there's no one inside the ropes at Augusta. It's just the players and the caddies, that's it. You don't have a horde of 100 media people inside the ropes, whether it's camera crews or it's, you know, still photography or just walking media. It's just the players and the caddy. And we're one with our thoughts, our, our conversations are, it's just, so unique and such a great experience but also i think it brings out some of the best golf you ever see uh, because of it we're able to just play is there any part of you that's aware of the overall tournament and momentum and how that is affecting everything at that stage at that moment it was francesco's tournament he's the one who had the two-shot lead um, you fast forward to 13 and all of a sudden it seems like there's four guys that were tied for the lead at the time. You know, Brooksy just makes eagle, I make birdie, Francesco makes birdie, and then Cantley just made, made something up ahead of us. DJ's making a run, Baba just got, got the 10 quickly. And so it went from in a one horse race with all of us kind of chasing Francesco to now Pandora's box is now opened up playing 13 where Right now, there's at least seven, probably seven guys, legitimate chance to win the tournament with six holes to go. Uh, so it got very interesting trying to figure it all out. So when I got down 13, um, I got a chance to look at the board and see you know, where everyone stood. I'm like, okay, I want to know what players in what position so that I know that after I play 14, headed to 15, I have a pretty good understanding of what's going on. And then on 15, as you say, that's when you see the next leaderboard, and that's where you take the lead. Correct, and I ended up taking the lead at, uh, at 15. Uh, they posted the number there. I hit it close on 16. So I, as I'm leaving 16 tee box, I take one last look at 15 because that's the last time we see the board until 17 green. There's no, there's no board on 16. And so trying to get an understanding of who is ahead of me. If I make birdie here and get to 14, how many guys have a chance to get to 14 under par? if I make par in the last two holes. Um, so I'm just trying to figure all that out. And meanwhile, thinking, okay, let's just focus on my game, but also I got to know the, the scenario. It's like, you know, it's like in any other sport. You want to know time and distance. You want to know what's going on so you can play the appropriate shots and, or understand the scenarios and what your options are. Yeah, after I built the stance for the putt, I knew it was going to be in. I mean, it's a one and a half footer. And I hit the putt, and I don't remember the ball going in. I remember just screaming. The last thing I remember is seeing the sky. It's kind of like what happened in 08 when I screamed. That I saw nothing but the sky. I said, you must, be, you must look like an idiot um, screaming at the sky. I kind of felt the same way. But then I realized I had just won the Masters. One of the neatest things I, I thought was after I had done everything that I needed to do, all the obligations that I had, is looking out because we'd finished early. And it was as cool a sight as you ever see, because I've never seen it like that on a Sunday after I'd won, because it's never been like that. It's dark. There's no one out there. The golf course is completely empty. It's a perfectly sunny day, and I have the jacket on. It looks like we could go play in a quick 18 if we wanted to. Like, this is one of the most surreal feelings that I certainly have ever experienced and probably ever will. There's a greater appreciation now at 43 than it certainly ever was at 21. Um, at 21, my, my career was just getting started. Uh, I felt like I could do this forever. I know I can't do this forever. And I know there's a, a window and I know there's a time limit. It's not quite yet, um, but I have a lot closer to it now than I was at 21. When I look back on, on golf, it, it always makes me smile. We've all, as kids, put ourselves in those scenarios. And so whether it was the imaginary 18th hole at Augusta National with 
a one-shot lead or win the US Open or Open Champion, whatever it may be. The cool thing is I got to live it. Now, it was a hell of a lot harder in reality than it was as a kid, but I was never afraid to put myself in those scenarios in all the games I played. And so it was always fun, it was always competitive, but I always envisioned myself being there.